One thing I didn't mention is that I'm in Layer Explorer here, and I'm just using, I'm not using all the other things that are in the Scene Explorer over here, I'm just using the layers. Kind of like what I showed in the Organizing Your Scene part in the generic section earlier. And it is just going to, I'm just using, using layers only and just doing it just as I've been showing you. But I'm going to get it out of the way right now. So I'm just making sure that I'm on a layer. Let's see, I'll go on floor, set that as my current. So when I start drawing the house and stuff, it's going to be on the floor layer. Then I can just turn it off. Just give me a little more screen space here. Okay, so let's start modeling this house. From the top view, again, we can just drag like this. And this is actually going to be the patio area of the house. So this platform that it's sitting on. Okay, so we've got the rectangle of it from the top view. From the side view, we can hit Q to move and lock it in. Make sure we're in the Y axis. And then just lock it in to right. I want it to sit off the concrete or off the dirt a little bit like that. Yes, maybe even a little more. Okay, and then we can extrude it. like so. Now we've got our little platform. Now if we want to go into detail, because photorealism is about detail, then we would we would have to recognize that just modeling that thing as a box isn't really sufficient. It's not representing reality very well and therefore your rendering won't look super real. Okay, so you could take this box and you could model it like that and you could just put a material on it that's a tileable wood texture. That's not exactly what we want to do here. We could make this nicer. It depends on how close we're going to see it to the camera too, but if we want to get crazy about this, we can go into some more tools here. Like, for example, let me just show you. We could take this rectangle and instead of converting it to an edit poly, we could add an edit, not an edit poly, uh, an editable spline. We could add an editable spline modifier right there before the extrude. That gives us all the same tools that an editable spline has. So we could say, let's select this outer spline here and go down to our handy outline tool. And we'll outline it just a little bit like that. Then extrude it. Okay, so it's kind of cool. You can, with modifiers, you can kind of stack things up. So if I turned off this edit spline, it would ignore what I just did in that edit spline and extrude the original rectangle. But with the edit spline on, it does that. You can also turn off the extrude. You can do a lot of things. Okay, so we could take this and we could say, okay, let's make a copy of this. Control V, copy. And we'll say, okay, let's go back just to the edit spline, delete this outer one again, and extrude this one by one and a half inches. Actually, let's not extrude it at all. Let's just leave it as a flat plane, convert it to edit poly. And then we'll move it up into place like that. Okay, so now we have kind of a platform with a rim rim joist around it, I guess, I guess you'd call that. It's just, it's more building it more accurately for what we want here. So let me show you now with this edit poly here, like an edit spline, except full surfaces, not just line work. Okay, so as an example of how we could add a little detail here, we could actually model each of the planks, right? So we have our wood on the outside that's kind of holding this whole thing together, but then we could take this and model planks of wood going across the top. So in edit poly mode, we can go into edges and we have a whole new set of tools in there. So say we wanted to connect these edges across with lines. We can just use the connect tool. If we hit on this window here, it brings up a dialog box for us and we can adjust things like that. So it's connecting it as many times as we tell it to. If you just hit this, it would, it would use basically your last settings. Okay, so we don't want to do that in this case. We want to use this window and then set it like this. Okay, so those lines represent individual planks of wood. Then let's see, how do we get this to look like individual planks of wood? Well, we need gaps between each board. So for that, you can use a chamfer. 
again using the dialog box. Okay, and it looks like there's a lot here. And you can see it's chamfering it, basically turning one edge into multiple edges. But what we'd want here is like um, to delete the faces in between, right? So that's a setting in here. It should be this one, open chamfer, like that. Okay, so really quickly, we were able to just turn this into a bunch of planks without having to model each one, right? Now you can see they're flat, which isn't right either. So we would need to add thickness to them. There's a modifier for that. It's called the shell modifier. So if we go out of sub-object mode and go to shell, just a modifier in here, you can see now we just added thickness. So it added thickness on top, one inch. We'll say, we'll make it like one and a half inches, and then we can drop it into place a little bit like that. So pretty instantly we have a bunch of planks for our little wood platform there. Okay, so that's more accurate than just modeling it as a block. So I like that. Now there's a lot more you could do to it. You could, you've got the shell on it now. Now we could do something like a bevel modifier or a chamfer modifier. And I showed you there's chamfer built into the edit poly tool, but there's also a chamfer modifier. Okay, and you can change, you can see that's chamfering all the edges of my, of my planks there. You can make it a hard edge so that it looks more crisp or default. This is actually new for 2021, the way that you can do this. I'm just using the legacy. So if you're in an older version, it's going to look like this. And I'm just wanting a crisp edge on that to give it just kind of a chamfered, a chamfered edge so that it's not a perfectly crisp edge. I like that. Okay, but there's other options in here too, like that. Okay, so that's more rounded, and then there's some smoothing going on to make these look more smooth. But because we're dealing with hard objects, not soft ones, then I actually would just want it to look hard like that, just a hard edge. Okay, so there's a lot of different things you can do, but you can see that spline modeling and poly modeling are a little bit different mindsets, but either way, you can go into edit spline, and have full control over every vertice and line in there. Or you can go to edit poly and have control over every face. Okay, so those are two, two different things, two different mindsets. It's going above and beyond what we do with standard primitives or just drawing lines and extruding them. And this is where you get into the full control of making things as organic or inorganic, as real or, or fake as you want. Right, as much will as much time as you're willing to go in here and work in details using edit poly modeling tools, you know, you can get more and more realistic as you go. So I could I could model in tiny little cracks into here. We'll get into some more poly modeling stuff and we'll see it demonstrated as we go and we'll do more spline modeling stuff too. Where we're just drawing basic splines. But I wanted to show you some examples of how you can start thinking about modeling principles.